Okay, look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah, right in the eye. See that little fold of tissue in the inner corner of both of your eyes? Well, get ready for this. It was actually once a third eyelid, or nictitating membrane. You can see it today in snakes or lizards, for example. The third eyelid was used for the same purpose as the other two, although it's unclear whether humans ever even had it fully grown. This membrane wasn't as thick as the two eyelids we have, and it could moisten the eye without obstructing the view. Right now, all we have left of it is this tiny fold in the corner of the eye, and most likely in the future we will lose it altogether. And maybe we'll finally stop waking up with that yucky crust that forms in our eyes overnight. Now, while you're still in front of the mirror, look lower. Lower. And lower still. Yeah, those are your toes. Say hello and goodbye. Scientists believe that, in some more or less distant future, we'll get rid of our toes completely. Our ancestors, the ancient primates, needed toes to climb trees more efficiently. They use both their hands and feet to grab tree branches. You can see it today in most monkeys and apes. They have longer and more flexible toes, along with flappier feet that allow them to get a hang on branches. Their feet mobility also lets them grab objects from the ground if necessary. For us humans, even lifting a pen we dropped on the floor with our toes is a complex task, but not for our primate relatives. Humans have evolved along a different route. We started walking upright and climbed down from trees, making rigid feet and shorter toes more of a necessity over time. Today, we still use our toes for balance when rolling from the balls of our feet to the tips of the toes, but our balance is now much more centered. It first moved towards our inner feet, which resulted in our pinky toes becoming so tiny, and the big toes, well, so big. As the balance moves away from the toes entirely, though, they're more likely to get fused together in the future. Now, turn around and look at your gorgeous behind. If you've ever fallen off a skateboard or slipped on an icy patch, you must remember what a terrible thing it is to hit that tailbone on a hard surface. Luckily for us, scientists predict it's going to go away pretty soon in the course of evolution. A tailbone is a feature that was left to us by our primate ancestors too. And yet again, they needed their tails to achieve more mobility among tree branches, using them to fling themselves from tree to tree. It's hard to say when humans drop the tail to never pick it back up, but facts are facts. The only thing we have reminding us of those glorious tree jumping days is the pretty useless bone at the lower end of our backs. Okay, back to the face now. Open your mouth and say, ah. If you're a lucky individual to have no wisdom teeth, then you can be proud knowing that you're a product of evolution going strong. As you might know, teeth are the only part of the human body that doesn't repair itself. So if you lost all your teeth back in the dark times with no dentists around, the only choice you had was to eat liquid food. Not cool. Dentists believe that nature gave us wisdom teeth as a replacement for old, worn-out teeth we've had since childhood. That's why they grow so late in our lives. Today, though, with all the progress dentistry has gone through, we tend to keep all or most of our teeth intact until a very old age. And even if we lose some, we can always replace them with new ones. That makes wisdom teeth a vestigial thing. And they seem to understand that, since more and more people never have to go through the ordeal of teething as grown-ups. Speaking of teeth, our entire jaw has been changing for the past, oh, 10,000 years, and is predicted to change even more quite soon. In fact, it's been the fastest changer of all our body parts. Back in the day, when early humans survived by hunting and gathering, they needed massive, powerful jaws and bigger teeth to chew through raw meat and grind plants. As they came to cooking and then farming, their food became less tough, and so their jaws became smaller to fit the current needs. As time went by, our jaws shrank more and more, and they're likely to continue doing so in the future. With lots of processed foods that don't need much chewing, humans of the future are probably going to have more delicate facial features with thin jaw lines and smooth cheekbones. Some body parts are not going away, but making a comeback instead. 
A hundred years ago, fabella, a tiny bone in the back of the knee, was only present in around 11% of people, and scientists thought it would disappear entirely pretty soon. But against all odds, the brave little bone has made it into the knees of a whopping 39% of modern people. It's still unknown why exactly the fabella returned. But the most popular opinion is that we've grown taller and heavier than our ancestors. That much is true. As our diet became better and more nutritious, we learned to live longer and grow taller. We're now probably at the peak of our evolutionary height. And the fabella might have appeared in our bodies to provide a smooth surface for the tendon behind the knee to slide on, reducing friction and lowering the chances of damage because of wear and tear. Speaking of becoming bigger, let's get you back to that mirror, shall we? Flex a little bit. Ooh, nice biceps there. But unfortunately, not as nice as your ancient ancestors were. Not everything about evolution is 100% good for us. It's just a set of features that adapted best. And that's the case with our muscles. They've grown smaller and weaker with time, especially in our upper bodies. In ancient times, humans needed big and strong muscles to do a lot of handiwork. From hunting and schlepping their catch home to crafting tools and building shelters. Later, it didn't grow easier. Much the opposite, in fact, plowing fields and building complex structures required a lot of physical strength and endurance. But as the technological progress started booming, physical capabilities gave way to brain power. And machines began doing a lot of work for us, most of it even better than us. We shifted more towards sedentary lifestyle, spending more and more time in front of computers. And our muscles have been growing steadily smaller, because we simply don't need them as much anymore. It's highly likely that, as the progress goes further, we'll become much slenderer and have more trouble gaining muscle mass. Our brain is of particular interest, because it's been changing in a kind of a strange pattern. Our distant ancestors had a rather small brain at first, but the close relatives of humans, the Neanderthals, obtained a larger brain than the average modern human has. In the course of evolution, human brain grew larger. But in the more recent centuries, it started shrinking, and no one knows exactly why. Some experts say it might have to do with the change of our lifestyle and social connections. Early humans, especially hunter-gatherers, had to remember every plant and animal they saw, their properties, and how to use this or that thing. They were more generalist, having to learn everything their parents knew and find out more on their own. The modern human is more specialized in a certain area, delving deeper into some narrow subject while relying on their peers for the rest where ancient humans worked in groups in which anyone could potentially replace anyone else, we gather in teams, where each member has their own specific task and is irreplaceable. Still, brain size doesn't seem to matter that much, because orcas and elephants, for example, have bigger brains than us, which doesn't make them more intelligent. Happier? (laughs) I'm guessing yes. And if we venture further into the unknown, meaning millennia from today, we might even develop some pretty unbelievable traits. Some go as far as to say that if the tendency for the sea levels to rise persists, humans might adapt to living in water. We might evolve to have webbed hands and feet to swim better and develop gills to be able to breathe underwater. Or if we go into space and start colonizing other planets, we will inevitably have to adapt to their conditions. Mars, for instance, has lower gravity and a much colder climate. It will probably make humans taller and lighter, but also may cause them to grow much more body hair to keep warm. And planets with stronger gravity and higher temperatures will, on the contrary, turn humans into stocky, sturdy, and likely hairless creatures. The possibilities are endless. Hey, maybe due to social media, we'll just turn into little blobs with big eyes and thumbs and not much else. So much better for texting. Hmm, hope not. Human feet. You know, those sometimes smelly things at the end of your legs? Yeah, those. Well, those are adapted to support us while walking upright. 
so the bones and ligaments in there are quite rigid. But some people have floppier feet that might indicate our ancestry. A study of nearly 400 people showed that about 1 out of 13 had them like that. Primates use their feet like we use our hands. They climb trees with agility. So they need to have floppy feet to do it efficiently. But humans from 2 million years in the past also had less rigid feet. Scientists believe studying people with this rare bone structure may help understand how ancient humans walk. And also whether this floppiness actually helps in climbing, too. Now, our height, the shape of our body, and skin color depend on where our ancestors used to live. But we can adapt to new conditions even within our own lifespan. For example, if you move from plains to the mountains, you'll eventually develop more red blood cells to compensate for the lack of oxygen. And naturally, if you move from a colder climate to a hotter and sunnier one, your skin will get pigmented to adapt. Now, a second pair of arms would come in handy in a lot of situations. But an extra pair of fingers might be helpful too. About one in every 500 people is born with six digits on either hand. In most cases, the extra fingers are considered useless and removed. But research has shown that those who've left them could do lots of everyday things with just one hand, like tying their shoelaces or playing video games with game pads. Okay, how many fingers am I holding up now? About 1 in 25,000 people are born with the thumbs on their hands having three flanges instead of the usual two, giving their hands a very extraordinary look. And when it happens in combinations with six fingers, which isn't too rare by the way, the picture is even more cryptic. Such a condition doesn't bring much discomfort. In fact, some actions are even easier done with a thumb that has an extra flange. Like thumbing your nose, perhaps. It's been believed for a long time that a person could distinguish more than 10,000 smells. Some research done not long ago showed that people were able to distinguish more than a trillion smells. We also remember them better than anything else, and smells can even evoke some distant memories. Like with Grandpa and the big baked bean party when you were a kid. We can accidentally digest small objects such as plastic items, glass, coins, and many other small objects. They'll make their way through the digestive tract within 48 hours. And there's even a man who managed to eat a whole airplane. Now, it took him years though, but little by little, he finished his metal meal with no trouble at all. I had a joke here about passing a landing gear, but yeah, I'll skip that one. Now, every person has their unique smell that can't be confused with anyone else's. It's exactly the same mechanism that allows other animals to find members of their family in packs and distinguish them from strangers. Still, if you have an identical twin, you will both have almost the same smell. Scientists found that body odors of identical twins are 10 times more similar than those of unrelated people. Unfortunately, a well-trained dog would still easily distinguish you two. Now, most people have three types of cones in their eyes, allowing us to see millions of colors. Women typically see more shades. But sometimes, they see so much more that they're literally unable to comprehend the difference. That's thanks to a fourth cone in their eyes that enhances their vision a hundredfold. And what's more, the number of women born with this extra cone is about 12%. But only a few of them can actually use it because in most cases, it remains inactive. Now, imagine falling from the roof of a 10-story building and getting away with a few bruises and scratches, but no broken bones whatsoever. Such a genetic anomaly was discovered back in 1994, and it is associated with the LRP5 gene. It makes a person's bones about 8 times denser than normal, which basically makes them almost indestructible. There's a whole extended family in Connecticut that has this mutation, and all 20 members of it have extraordinarily dense bones. Scientists who did research of the blood samples of this family say they have the strongest skeletons in the world. Many people think that a cleft chin is a sign of a strong and independent character. But it's really a gene mutation, which results when the bones or muscles in the lower jaw don't fuse completely during development inside the womb. Just like many other anomalies, it's hereditary. Which means, yes, you can blame your parents. However, if a person has a cleft chin, it doesn't necessarily mean that their offspring will have it too. 
because environmental factors in the womb or the presence of modifier genes, genes that influence other genes, can prevent it. There are no two identical brains in the world. Brain structure highly depends on conditions in which it develops and grows. And so, we all have something individual to us even on a biological level. And just like your fingers, your tongue too has a unique print on it that won't be like any other in the world. Nah, let's not compare tongues. A less impressive but not less rare condition is the so-called double crown. A crown is that patch of hair on top of your head that goes in a spiral. It's pretty hard to miss if you have short hair, especially because it's the hardest part to smooth down. People normally have one, but there are individuals unlucky enough to have two and double the smoothing trouble. Still, some believe having a double crown is, on the contrary, a sign of good luck or even high intelligence. Mm. On a similar note, do you ever wake up and look at your tousled hair with frustration? And now imagine having this disheveled look forever and not being able to do anything about it. It's called the uncombable hair syndrome. Your hair's always sticking out every which way, and no amount of water or hair gel can tame it. Heterochromia makes your eyes two different colors, say one hazel and the other blue. It has to do with the levels of melanin in your body, a pigment that affects the colors of your skin, hair, and, yes, your eyes. There's also partial heterochromia, which is only a part of one of your eyes is differently colored. It's not too common in humans, but I'll bet you've seen it in dogs, huskies in particular. This breed is naturally predisposed to this condition, and it looks super cool. Now, the rarest genetic condition there probably is, called the golden blood, can be a lifesaver for millions of people. There are just 40 known carriers of this blood type in the world. They don't have any Rh blood cell antigens, which means anyone can accept their blood, even those with extremely rare blood types. And although their blood isn't golden in color, it's certainly worth more than just gold. Now, turn your arm palm up on some flat surface and touch your pinky and thumb together. Now, look at your wrist. Do you see a muscle getting tense under your skin there? If you don't, that's okay. It only means you're in about 10% of people who don't have the palmaris longus. It's a muscle that scientists believe used to be useful for hanging and gripping in our ancestors. In modern humans, though, it has no real value, so we're evolving to drop it altogether. About one half to 1% of people in the world have an extra hole next to their ears that serves no clear purpose. And it is pretty useless, although not dangerous either. It's just a sign that your ancestors used to have gills. According to estimations, only about 6% of the world's population can solve the Rubik's Cube. Despite it being just a skill like any other, most of us have to learn it, either by watching tutorials on the web or asking someone for help. And only a small percentage of people can actually solve it on their own. If you're one of them, you're a truly rare individual. Raising your eyebrows in surprise is a common thing, and raising just one to express skepticism isn't rare either. But it depends on which eyebrow you usually raise. If you can do this trick with either eyebrow, you're actually unique. Since your eyebrows are controlled by muscles, you can train yourself to raise either of them at will. But it often takes time and conscious effort. Moving your ears is about the same. Not so many people can do it. And there are even fewer of those who can wiggle just one ear instead of both. It's an ancient feature that dates back to our primate ancestors who used their ears to control their surroundings. And of course, it's still present in most mammals. Now, while most people around the world are right-handed, being a lefty puts you in a minority. That's not surprising. But a really remarkable thing is ambidexterity. Only about 1% of the world's population can use both their hands equally well meaning they could hold a spoon, pick their nose, or write in their notebook switching hands with no trouble at all. How useful would that be? We, um, <clears throat> I mean, human beings, have been evolving for 6 million years, but we're still not perfect. Turns out that our bodies have a bunch of design flaws. First of all, human eyes have tiny blind spots, never mind the philosophical ones. Such a spot is about the size of a pinhead. It's located at the point where the optic nerve passes through the surface of the retina at the back of the eye. Your optic nerves connect your eyes to the brain, 
they carry images for your brain to process. This is how you see. In the spot where these nerves leave your eye, though, there's a lack of something called photoreceptors. These receptors detect light and are the reason you can see. Without them, your eyes wouldn't be able to send any signals to your brain to describe what you're looking at. But because there are no photoreceptors there, you've got a tiny blind spot in each of your eyes. If people were designed perfectly without this flaw, they'd have eyes just like octopuses. It may sound weird, but the eyes of these creatures are eerily similar to humans. But their optic nerves run behind the retina. This means that the nerves don't have to leave the eye at any point. So there's no gap that causes the blind spot in human eyes. What else? Around 65 million Americans complained about having issues with their back. And this is because of evolution. Just like dogs, humans used to walk on all fours. When people were walking on their hands and knees, the curve of their spine was pretty much perfect, and all their organs felt comfortable. Because of this, there was never any pressure on their backs. Well, we evolved to start walking on two legs to save energy. The search for food took longer and longer. And when walking on two legs, people saved 25% of energy. But this was bad news for people's backs. Because this way, their spines were basically forced to turn into a column to support all the weight and make space for other organs. But if your spine was completely straight, you wouldn't be able to walk on two legs. So it evolved to become curved. But this puts a big amount of pressure on your lower back. So basically, to get rid of our pesky back problems, you should start walking on all fours again. Yeah, that'll work. Make no bones about it, people have too many bones in their feet. We have all these bones because our ape-like ancestors needed them to grab onto tree branches. Now, people aren't swinging from trees anymore, but we still have all those bones, which makes us prone to damaging them. And this can be extremely uncomfortable. Think about how many times you've stubbed your toes. If we were designed perfectly, our feet would look like those of an ostrich. These birds have way fewer bones. And the parts that look like knees turned backwards are actually their ankle joints. This makes ostriches less prone to injuries and also helps them run fast. Wow, if people were designed this way, it would make the Olympics way more interesting. I'd sure watch. Now, chew on this one. Human teeth are also far from perfect. People spend so much money on preserving them. At the same time, no other animal has to visit a dentist as we do. Also, once our teeth are permanently damaged or fall out, we can't grow new ones. Sharks are the opposite. They have an endless supply of teeth. In some shark species, a new set of teeth develops every two weeks. Kangaroos also have way better teeth than people do. If we were designed perfectly, we'd probably have the same teeth as our bouncing buddies. Once their teeth wear down, they fall out and their rear teeth migrate forward. That's not the only issue we have with our teeth. Our mouths are way too crowded. Hey, I normally have a foot in mine. In the process of evolution, the human brain grew dramatically, and our jaws had to become wider and shorter to make room for it. But this left almost no room for our wisdom teeth. In the past, wisdom teeth were helpful when people needed to break down food, but as we learned to cook and process food, these teeth weren't needed anymore. So, in short, people should just get rid of them completely. And this may actually be happening. Around 25% of people, mostly Eskimos, are now born without some or all of their four wisdom teeth. Now, it happens that our knees are quite impractical too. It's the most complex joint in the body. It's sandwiched between two massive levers, which is already pretty risky. The knee only moves forward or backward, which doesn't make it a very secure construction. That's why there's a bunch of rules in many kinds of sports, like soccer or rugby, that forbid hitting an opponent's knee from the side. To make people better suited to their new sporty lifestyle, the hinge-like mechanism of the knee could be replaced with a ball and socket. This would be like the structure you have in your shoulders and hips. Friends, Romans, countrymen, waggle your ears. Yep, like dogs and cats, some humans can waggle their ears. These lucky ones can move their ears independently thanks to special muscles called extrinsic ear muscles. But those serve literally no purpose, apart from providing a cool party trick. Speaking of design flaws, human voice boxes are in the completely wrong place. Your windpipe, thanks to which you can breathe, and your food pipe, which is, you guessed it, where the food goes, 
open into the same space. This space extends from your nose and mouth down to your voice box. You have a little leaf-shaped flap that covers the opening to your voice box whenever you swallow. It prevents food from going into your windpipe. But this mechanism isn't always fast enough. If you're talking while eating, it's incredibly easy for the food to slip down and accidentally go into your airway. And you definitely don't want that. The whale's voice box is designed much more wisely. It's located in its blowhole, away from its mouth. If people could move their voice box into their nose, they would have two separate tubes, and there would be no risk of choking. (laughs) But there would be a downside. We wouldn't be able to talk. But we could communicate through singing instead, like our whale friends. We'd be able to do this by producing vibrations in our noses, kinda like this. Don't I sound better? Hey, leave me a comment below. You like ribs? I love them. But we're not talking about those kind of ribs. Some of us humans have an extra 13th set of ribs. Between 1 and 3% of the world's population have these ribs, called cervical, and they serve absolutely no purpose. Some people have just one of such ribs on the left side or the right side of their body. And others have cervical ribs on both sides. Now, you don't really need your appendix. It may contain some useful bacteria to help when you have stomach issues, but apart from that, it's not really necessary. The worst thing is that the appendix can get easily inflamed. The appendix was originally designed to help people digest cellulose, which is found in most green plants. This was back when people's diet mainly consisted of plants and almost no animal food. So, I say, let's get rid of it. Moving on. Blood is delivered from your heart to all the tissues of your body through thin pipes called arteries. The blood flows into each of your arms and legs through one large artery. For your arms, this artery is located at the biceps, and for your legs, it's in the front of the thigh. But your back needs blood too. And still, instead of having a large artery at the back of your body, you have smaller ones branching out and bundling around your bones and nerves. This is really impractical and makes people pretty susceptible to glitches, which is why you often get numb arms or legs. Bummer. How about something humorous? Take a look at your elbow. There, a branch of the artery meets up with something called the ulnar nerve. Thanks to this, you can move your pinky fingers. This is also why, when you bang your funny or humorous bone, your arm goes all numb and tingly. Ow! To fix this, we really need one more large artery in the back of our body near the shoulder blades. This extra pipe would provide the blood with a more direct route. This would also stop your arms and legs from going numb when you bump them in the wrong place. Finally, there's this tail. People still have a tailbone, even though there's no tail in sight. For our ape-like ancestors, the tail was incredibly helpful. They used it to balance themselves while jumping from one high branch to another. Now that we live in actual houses, most of us don't swing through trees anymore. The tailbone, whose official name is the coccyx, is easily fractured. So currently, it's just a design flaw. Researchers also claim that removing it would improve posture issues too. Your body actually glows! It emits a super faint light that's at its strongest at around 3 to 4 p.m. The sad news is that this glowing is 1,000 times less intense than what your eyes can see. Humans are the only animals that have chins. Even our closest genetic relatives, gorillas and chimps, lack this small piece of bone that extends forward from the jaw. Their lower jaws slant down and back from their front teeth. Scientists still haven't figured out this mystery. The opinions about why people are made this way differ. Some researchers think chins help us chew our food. Others are sure they have something to do with speaking. A few of us think it's simply a special place to grow a goatee. The most abundant element in the human body is oxygen, at 65%. But it also contains lithium, cobalt, gold, and uranium. The rarest one of all is radium. On average, humans yawn 20 times a day, partially spontaneously, for example, when you're tired, but sometimes when someone yawns near you. Scientists think it could be a thing called social mirroring. Usually, when animals mimic each other, they recognize some action as useful, so they decide to do it too. With humans, it happens when someone crosses legs, laughs, smiles at you, or... 
Your stomach acid breaks down the foods you eat and turns them into easy-to-digest particles. It also stops nasty pathogens and microbes that could make you sick. In fact, your stomach acid is so strong that it can even dissolve bone and metal. Don't start munching down on your soda cans, though. That's probably not going to end well. Your brain has more than 86 billion nerve cells. They're all joined together by 100 trillion connections. That's even more than the number of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. There's a good chance you can guess someone's name based on how they look. Researchers showed portrait photos to a group of people with four names written below. They were asked to choose the right name for this or that person. The law of chance says you'll guess it 25% of the time. But in this research, people got the names correct at a rate of 25 to 40%. And there were more than 94,000 faces shown. Let's say a man is called Bob. People will expect for him to have a rounder face than Tim. They expect Bob to be more jolly and ready to hang out with people. It has to affect his facial appearance in some way. A woman called Catherine can be considered more serious, studious, and concentrated. That could eventually influence her facial muscles as well. When ancient Romans flexed their biceps, they thought their muscles looked like mice. That's why the word muscle translates as little mouse in Latin. Your left lung is smaller than the right one because it shares space with your heart. Experts used to think that we can only distinguish 10,000 smells. In fact, a recent study found human beings can recognize 1 trillion smells. Millennials, or people born between 1981 and 1996, are more forgetful than older people. The main cause of their forgetfulness comes from higher levels of stress. So come on, dude, chill out, okay? Some scientists think that the purpose of fingerprints is a better grip, but others believe they're there to help wick water off them and allow the skin to stretch when needed to protect it from damage. There's also a theory saying that fingerprints improve the sense of touch. Hot coffee can taste better than cold coffee. Your taste bud receptors are most sensitive when your food is at or a little bit above room temperature. Hot coffee can then seem less bitter because taste buds that detect bitterness are more sensitive when the coffee is cold. The biggest molecule in the human body is the chromosome 1. A human cell has 23 chromosome pairs, and each chromosome 1 is made of 10 billion atoms. You inhale 25 sextillion molecules in just one breath. That's 25 followed by 21 zeros. When you're walking faster, at some point, you'll feel the natural urge to start jogging. Your body wants to have a stable state, whether you're running or walking. So, if you're walking fast, it will unconsciously force you to start running. One theory is, we use more energy when walking faster than running. So, that's one of the ways the body saves energy. Your pinky is a powerful little thing. Without it, your hand would lose a significant part of its power. Your index and middle fingers cooperate with your thumb to grab and pinch. And your pinky, together with your ring finger, provides grip strength. The fattiest organ in your body is your brain. Fat makes up at least 60% of its dry weight. This quality got the brain to the Guinness World Records. The organ contains around 25% of your body's cholesterol, which is vital for the brain's well-being. Your bones are four times harder than concrete. The strongest bone in your body is the femur. It can support up to 30 times the weight of a grown-up person. Even crazier is that our bones are made up of composite material, meaning they're both hard and elastic at the same time. Your fingernails grow twice as fast as your toenails. It would take 15 and a half months for your toenails to grow one inch, but only seven months for your fingernails to get this long. The outer layer of your skin is thicker on your feet than on other parts of your body. The heart has its own electrical system and can continue beating even when it's disconnected from the body. The vessels in your body are long enough to circle the Earth twice or more. The idea that we use only 10% of our brains is a myth. At any given time, you use almost 100%. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to perform simple tasks, like drink a cup of coffee. More than 70% of your brain consists of water, and it needs 20% of your body's oxygen supply. The average lifespan of one eyebrow hair is four months. The body of a 110-pound person 
contains 40 tablespoons of salt. If you ironed out all the wrinkles in your brain and laid it flat, it would be the size of a pillowcase. The brain wrinkles, as there's not a lot of room in the skull, so it folds over itself as it grows. By the way, don't do that pillowcase thing with your brain. Trust me on this one. We spend 40% of our life with our eyes closed. Most of that time is when we're asleep. But don't forget to count blinking, too. Or while driving. You produce around 85,000 pints of spit in your lifetime. That's enough saliva to fill around 500 bathtubs. Enough said. The highest blood flow isn't actually in your heart. And it's not in your brain, either. It's in your kidneys. It's super hard for us to grasp just how small an atom is. But think of it this way. Your body is made up of a staggering seven octillion atoms. Yeah, doesn't that look like a seven being chased by a whole mob of zeros? For adults, the blood makes up seven to eight percent of the total body weight. About 55% of your blood is liquid plasma. The rest is red and white blood cells and platelets. They form clots and prevent bleeding. You can't swallow and breathe at the same time. The food you swallow and the air you breathe go down the same part of your throat at first. Only a bit deeper does the passage split into the esophagus for food and liquid and the trachea for air. When you swallow, your airway gets automatically closed off. This prevents you from accidentally inhaling food. But occasionally, it still happens. There's a name for the growling sound that your stomach makes when you're hungry. It's called borborygmy. It takes six to eight hours for food to travel through your stomach and small intestine. That's because your body is trying to absorb all its nutrients. The idea that the tongue has flavor zones is a myth. All taste buds can detect five tastes, but some receptors are more responsive than others. Human beings are the only animals that willingly delay sleep. Just make sure you get enough. <laughs>